something that I was just kind of going back and forth and the Lord was giving me more and more revelation on. And then all of a sudden, I start finding myself ministering to people concerning the matter. So as I was talking with the woman of God the other day, we were talking, and I was like, you know what? I really believe because this keeps coming up. I think it's something we ought to teach. Amen. I'm gonna have Sister Alice come in. Y'all can take that chair because she can't stand long. If somebody can just get a chair real quick for her, and I just want you to see. So we have some battle scars in the room. Amen. And our job and our assignment is to raise up young adults in the kingdom. In other words, we're talking about we raising children in the spirit. That's our assignment. We're raising y'all up in the spirit. Praise God. Praise Hallelujah. God. Amen. So we're gonna talk about something that the enemy uses so much in all of us, and not just in relationships, but even in our walk with Christ. And that and it's called loneliness. That, that's a scary topic loneliness. right there. Loneliness. And dealing with the spirit of loneliness. I'm scared. Versus being alone. My Lord. Okay, we're going to break that down because it's, a, it's somewhat of a thing that we kind of blend together as one as if it's the same thing, but it's not. So y'all, we're going to say lonely or loneliness or lonely and loneliness versus being alone. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, as I said, very often, we deem those two words to be the same. Most of us, you know, we feel like because we don't have anyone, that it's the reason why we're lonely. Mm. Okay? And then, we get, and then we begin to battle with loneliness, which is a spirit. Okay? Y'all hear me? Praise the Lord. I'm alone, and I don't have anyone with me. Maybe a, a significant other type of relationship. Um, or if I'm, uh, I may not have people around me. You know, uh, or in this Christian walk, no one wants to be around me. Because I'm not doing what everyone else is doing now. Yeah. So all of a sudden, my crowd gets slimmer and slimmer. Have y'all been there? Been there. I'm, st I'm still dealing with it. down to none. I'm when still dealing with it. I came with Christ as a young adult, and I was going to my apartment by myself. That's real. I really didn't have nobody to hang around me, and I used to have roll dogs, we used to call it. We used to roll on Friday nights, Saturday nights, to the clubs, or whatever have you. And we were rolling, and it was consistent. But the moment my life changed and I began to live my life for Christ, no one was even answering the phone. Yeah. That, that, yeah, right, right. And I began to feel lonely. Mm -hmm. And then began to battle with the spirit of loneliness. My God. So real what? quick, because again, again, as I said, we have a lot of time. I want to say that when you, I, I'll deal with the relationship part, because that's something y'all can relate to a lot. You know, oh, All the time. I want a girlfriend, I want a boyfriend. Um, I want to give. Right? I was talking to someone, I'm not going to mention their name, but we was having a conversation. And that person was like, but I just, I just want to, I just want to have a girlfriend. I want to be with somebody. Amen? And it's like, because I'm just feeling, I'm lonely. It's like, and, and I'm like, wait, let's talk. Let's talk. Because let me help you with something. The issue of being lonely has nothing to do with being alone. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. At all. So we break down to two. Lonely, being lonely, amen, is a state of mind. Mm. Right, right. Okay? Being lonely is a state of mind. It's an emotional state of being. Mm. Meaning it's something going on on the inside of you. This is a good teacher. Does that make sense? It's an insecurity. Mm. Insecurity. Okay, okay, I like that. I'm lonely because I don't have nobody with me. If what? I had a girlfriend, boyfriend, blah, 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 and you fill in the blank, <sighs> I would no longer be lonely. Mm. Man. That's why I have this woman of God to come because we're about to show y'all and tell y'all that's a big old lie. Right, right. Amen. Right. 
Lonely is a lack or form of not feeling whole. Oh, mm. Not feeling whole, I, that was too much to put the, uh, the lack of not feeling whole. It was not being whole. <laughs> On the inside, that's what I got to add. Not feeling whole on the inside. I like that. Yeah. And this often opens the door to the spirit of loneliness. Yeah. And then we begin to battle with the spirit. Yeah. Okay, y'all got that? Yeah, I like being this. Being lonely is a state of mind. Okay? Yeah. Now, being alone. Amen. Having, it just basically means having no physical presence around you. Yes. Okay? So I can walk in a room, like when Pastor and the guys walked in before they set this up, no one was in the room when they came in. So it was basically being alone. Or if I get home, open up the door and everybody's gone, I'm alone. Because there's no physical presence around me. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Alright? And it often causes the spirit of loneliness to be magnified or being lonely. See, when I begin to see that I'm physically alone, it starts magnifying the loneliness on the inside of me. So if one is not careful, they will think that's why they're lonely. Does that make sense? Okay? So now we're going to talk about that since we broke it down. Amen? Um, as I will begin to minister to those who, uh, before I start teaching this, we begin to talk about those things. And I said that you can never, ever, ever put the pressure on an individual to keep, take the loneliness away from you. Because they can't. Another human being does not have the capability of taking loneliness away from you. When you're feeling lonely, you can be sitting next to someone else and feel lonely. Yes. You can be married and lay in the bed with your spouse and deal with loneliness. Because you said what is a state of mind? is an insecurity on the inside. There is a void going on on the inside of that individual that has nothing to do with the person they're with. Mm -hmm. Okay? So what God wants us to do as disciples is to begin to separate the two so that we can deal with the two. If you don't want to be alone, and I'm just saying in relationship form, it could be like, you know, your family. Hey, your family is not here. You know, my daughter could be dealing with lonely. You're feeling alone because her family is not with her in San Antonio, right? But us not being there has nothing to do with her loneliness. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so we got to take the pressure off people so we can deal with what's going on on the inside of us. We want to be made whole. God says, I want you to be made whole. Amen? I want you to be made whole. <laughs> Glory to God. So Sister Alice, woman of God, as we were talking, I'm going to just let her talk a little bit about that because as we were talking about it, it was like what she shared with me, made, it just went aligned in what we were talking about. Because she was just and I just let her talk about it, which which explains my argument if that makes any sense. That being alone has nothing to do with loneliness. Y'all, we gotta deal with that thing. Amen. So I'm gonna let her talk a little bit about it and where she is, so that you guys can understand the difference in the two. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm just gonna let the Lord lead me. Exactly what we talked about now to be detailed, but I, I will say, you know, this um, that I guess basically since I've been by myself, probably like 
17 years now. Um, one husband is probably 27 years of marriage. But love of my life, I'll say. Things happen, the enemy got busy or whatever, and then, you know, of course he's deceased and things like that. So I've had to pick up the pieces and make everything work as if, you know, just as if he's not around, I was used to him being there for several years of my life because I got married now, probably 21 years of age. But all these years, y'all, people have come to me with some kind of rap, you know, how do you get Young and old, <laughs> I don't move them out. And I've never wanted to rob a prayer, so I was like, move around, but I'm not interested in you, too young for me. Then there was the older ones that were coming, and you know, you meet people anyway. I've ridden the bus, I've worked in jobs where a lot of men were there. It's like, no, I can't deal with you. I'm already assessing your spirit, and God is always showing your food. So we're not going to be compatible. So, and it's hard, y'all, to live a life of singleness, especially when this is something that the Word of God said, you know, uh, it's not good for a man to be alone, but I feel like it's not good for a woman to be alone either. But at the same time, you know, it gets to the point to where if nobody has shown up that actually the resume is going to line up, not perfect, but closer than what I've seen, then okay, God, I'm 66. Well, I'll just be content where I'm at. So he's also conditioned me to not be lonely. That's just not even part of me. People will call me and say, oh, Lord, really? I'm not. <laughs> well, let me try to help you not be bored. Because I found myself more involved with God, married to God, loving on God, eat God, sleep God, wake up talking about Him. Anybody want to talk about God today? That's me. That's who God has created me to be. I can't speak for everybody else, but I'm just, it's just the way that God has made me to be. Now, if He sends somebody my way, it will kind of interrupt my little space that I'm used to, because I'm kind of used to my own way. But if they kind of come in and kind of compliment what I've been going through, uh, that's, and that's mostly being married to God and loving on God. We going to church? Yeah, I'm going to church. Going to Bible study? Yeah, I'm going there too. So if we can be compatible like that, then we can probably roll together. But other than that, no. So like I said, loneliness, that's not a part of me. Being alone, that don't bother me either. I'm not alone because God is with me. He said, they are going to be always, even to the ends of the earth, right? Amen. So, just to encourage y'all, I was young, and now I'm older, but hey, God is still with me. Even when all our friends walk away and leave us, God is going to still be there. And everybody ain't going to fit with us. That's just about mine. Everybody ain't going to fit. So, we have to make our choice. Be choicy, be selective. Be content. I love the place that I'm in right now because I don't want no interruption. I don't want confusion. I don't want any of that drama. Just leave that out there. But if God sends somebody that's going to be compatible, we can get along and have church and do whatever. Amen. Praise God. So basically, in what she was talking about and even our conversation that we were having, the reason why she's able to be that way is not because, oh, she's older. Because there are older people, and I promise you, I've talked to people who are our age who deal with loneliness because of being alone. The conversation I asked her was, do you want to have a mate? And she said, yes, I desire a mate. Sister Alice, she desires a mate. So we can pray for that because she doesn't want to be physically alone. But what makes her content is that she's not struggling with loneliness. Does that make sense? So she can wait because she's content. Loneliness makes us impatient to wait, right? And we make choices too fast, too wrong, all of the above because of what we're battling with on the inside. So I wanted her to share that, not because she's older or anything like that, because y'all, again, spiritual things have nothing to do with age. 
Amen? So she has a desire. Raise your hand if you have a desire to be with someone. Everybody, is that you I mean, it's okay if you don't. It's all right. <laughs> Amen? What about you, brother? Do you have a desire to be with someone one day? Ever? Never? He said no. <laughs> okay, you would. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> what about you, brother? Do you desire to be with someone one day? Never? Okay. All right. All right, now. The Lord is here to say no. <laughs> brother Bob, so do you, do you desire to be with someone? And again, y'all, there's so many levels of loneliness or being alone. We're just speaking in regards to what we deal with the most. Because I like to be really real here. And if we want someone in our lives. Because it calms the, is the issues of right. Like, I want to be with somebody, right, Brother Terrence? Do you desire to be with someone, Brother Terrence? Huh? <laughs> what? You did one right now. <laughs> you say, you desire, oh, you say, I want one right now. You know, Terrence, you gotta always be difficult. You know, <laughs> right. He said he desires to be with someone. Amen? But would you be honest? Come here, come here, come here. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, I want you to be honest, because we all family, right? Sure. Would you be honest that you get a little impatient and you deal with loneliness because you see other people with uh, other, you know, with mates and you? Oh, yeah. All the time. All the time. All the time. So what kind of things that make you do? Being patient. Do you find yourself talking and trying to rush things along with people so you think that it will stop the loneliness? I try that. I try, yes. You try that? Does it sometimes make you compromise? All the time. All the time. Because of the lack of what you're feeling on the inside? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So let's just say that you allow the Lord to deal with the issues on the inside. The issues of feeling, the lack of wholeness, you know, that state of just feeling alone. If you felt like the Lord dealt with that part, how do you think your issue would be in regards to choosing the lady? How do you think you'll be? Well, the Lord would, um, first of all, he's going to reveal to you you know, on what to look inside me, you know, and uh, it's like your, your, uh, how can I say this, like, the way you picture a man is going to look different, you know, and uh, you're going to just start to change the way you Amen. Amen. Does it calm some of the urges on the inside? If you feel like that, that you're not battling with, I gotta be with somebody, I gotta be with somebody. Of course, of course, of course. You call the same down? So I wanted to kind of deal with two different ends of the spectrum. Does that make sense, y'all? We got someone who's honestly saying, I deal with loneliness, right? So I'm mm -hmm. talking to people, I'm looking on social media, I'm compromising. I know this girl ain't right, but I'm trying to make her right so I can, like, not be alone. Yeah. Huh? Huh? That's the bad one? Yeah. And, and they know, you can hear what's coming out their mouth that is not the woman for you, right? Or the man for you. No cap. Right? But you figure, if I can make it happen and make it right, then I can hurry up and fulfill these issues on the inside of me, right? Amen? Mm. Then we have someone on this side who say, <laughs> because I'm content, God has dealt with that part of me that makes me feel like I'm whole without someone. I can wait on the Lord. Amen. Like you can wait patiently on the Lord. Amen. When the Lord began to deal with me about that loneliness, when Pastor came along, y'all, I was so content in God, I wasn't even trying to hear it. Man. Right? To the point to where. <laughs> To the point where, I didn't know you were. Ah. yes, I was. So much to the point to where I can remember his sister. He was angry, y'all. Pastor was mad. Ah. 
because he didn't want, I didn't want to like give him a time of day. And so he was, he got mad, y'all. You know, trying to get him a mug. But then his sister, but his sister was like, come on, come on. She's pulling him to him. Go talk to her, go talk to her. I don't want to talk to her. I don't want to talk to her. Because he got angry. Because he wasn't moving in his time. Because he was dealing with loneliness, y'all. And he wanted to have a mate. And he was trying to do it in, not in the timing of God. And for me, I was so done with all the stuff I kept going through, y'all say cycles. Say cycles. I was tired of the cycles. Does that make sense? I got tired of the cycles, Minister Nicola, right? Come on, I know you have something you want to say. Um, and so I decided to just rest in God. I became content in just me and God. And, and we don't want to sound so religious, y'all, like just me and God, me and God. Because, you know, we're not saying, you know, do so. It's just the state of mind of what we're talking about. Okay? It doesn't mean you can't go and have a piece, look at eat pizza, or hang out or go to the movies or whatever. We're not saying, I wake up and I'm in the closet and say, Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. I don't want, well, I don't want to eat nothing because that's going to oh, so grieve the Holy Ghost. You know, not, that's not what we're saying. We're saying, be in God to where we're drinking Him and He's taking care of the insecurities. Yeah. The lack yeah. of, I'm nothing without a man. I'm not, I, 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 I gotta have a mate or life won't be awesome. Blah, 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 the stuff that you hear in your head. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. So when the time came and the Lord opened me up, because your pastor got mad and was angry a little bit for a little while. <laughs> But then when God passed his anger, he kind of came back around again. But when the time came, when he came back around again, I was open. Oh, and then, then there you go with the story. But 23 <laughs> years later, what'd you say this time? What'd you say? Really? <laughs> oh, God. He always did. <laughs> was it two years later this time? Huh? No, it was actually one year. Twenty-two years later. Well, we've been married twenty-three years. He's <laughs> trying to say y'all came along. You know, it did a long thing, your son. Is that good? It did a long thing, he your son. Oh, that's what you mean, baby. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Uh -huh. Come on, Minister, what do you have to say? Is, it, is, this, is this blessing, y'all? Does that make, is this making sense? Amen. Glory to God, because even out, and I'll mention something about Minister Gio, our conversation we had about where he is right now, but go ahead and say Oh, um, I'll say this. Like, <laughs> any, any guy, anybody can say any girl as well. I think based on culture, and society and the trends, everybody does want to be in a relationship at some point. But I've, I've struggled with that, but, but I think my biggest struggle was actually not that. It was actually, I grew up, uh, my sisters were older than me, so they were already grown. I didn't have no brothers or anybody in my house except my mom. So, the best friend I probably did have was my mom. Now, uh, when I was in kindergarten, I met my best friend, and we knew each other, like we still know each other, so we still talk to this day. So he was like a brother. But I always wish I had like more siblings. Like when I went home, it was boring. All I could do was play video games and stuff like that. And sometimes you don't really know how to deal with that. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't that bad, but it was definitely something I always wish I had it was like more siblings, more people to talk to in the house. You know, the house was quiet. So that's something that I, that I actually went through. Whereas some people got a big old family and there's always something going on. Hey, hey, come on, y'all, let's play uh, dominoes or let's play Uno, this and that. I didn't have that. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that's where I actually feel like I struggled with the loneliness more was 
I just felt like there wasn't a lot of people to talk to. Yeah. Amen. So he came in from that aspect to say that. Amen. Amen. Um, would you have something to say, Brother Bissau? I thought you were about to say something. Exactly. <laughs> My Lord. You understand? And for women too, same thing. You cannot make a person responsible for your inner issues. That is a work for God. Real talk. Anybody else as we close? Oh, Jesus, that time. That is some deep. What'd you say? Go ahead. Bro, I'm a crybaby, bro.
You know what I'm saying? Something like so it just it's like so when you think about it, I'm like, okay, this do make sense. Like you're not just saying nothing that's just okay, we're going through another service or we're going through something that's being taught. But I can actually relate to it and use it to my advantage. You know what I'm saying? That's the point of us as going as disciples, y'all. We're being disciplined. Y'all say discipline. Discipline. We're disciplining our lives. We're really, really disciplining the soul. Amen. So that we can be able to be made whole in God. Amen. 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 So are we going to make people responsible for our loneliness again? No, indeed. Are we going to look at other people who can't possibly change it? Disapproved. Only God can give the power. If they got a you woman of God to be blessed with a, a spouse, guess what? You was already content. Exactly. Oh right? my Lord. My, my Lord. Amen. So oh, you just like sharing on the top, on top of the whole Sunday. Put cr cream Amen. on it. I like that a lot. Amen. Man. So when someone comes into your life, they come to add on. There's an assignment when God gives someone to you. Pastor and I did not make each other whole. We did not. We did not make each other whole. Hmm? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to ask But together you. in our wholeness, we have an assignment for the kingdom of God. Praise God. In our wholeness. And we stand alone within that, right? Do, 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 do. So, if I'm, so if I'm not with Pastor, it's not like I'm yeah, not yeah, yeah. anymore. I'm a whole Lord person says, in God. Yeah. Amen. I am God's daughter who happens to take me and say, I need you to stand up with this man and I want you to operate in the kingdom with this man. Together, y'all have a sermon together. Hallelujah. Amen. But you're talking about you not making me happy. Purpose. You're not doing this. And oh. And blah, 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 blah. I don't have time to concentrate on my son because I'm trying to make him, I'm trying to say, you be the hammer that's going to put the nail on the inside of me to make me stand up tall. No, my holiness is in Christ. So when I need to pray, Ooh. I need to pray. I gotta get in the closet and pray myself. Hallelujah! He, he don't get up at three o'clock. God tell me to get up at three. You better get up at three. I wasn't talking to your husband. I'm talking to you. Get up. Amen. Lord, man. I'm it's talking some, to you. It's some heat. Because I created, I created you for a purpose. Oh my Lord. Amen. So stop making people responsible for your holiness. <laughs> he said that I'll be with this in Isaiah 41 and 10. Y'all turn in real yes, quick. And now we went over the time. Pastor said therapy session. That's what Pastor said just now. What a deep message. Therapy yes. session. Man, Isaiah 41 and 10. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want me to, you want, you want me to kill this? Oh, no, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, was. 41 and 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Hallelujah. I am with you. So you're not alone. Even if you're in a house by yourself. Yeah. Even if you don't have a spouse. He said, What? Fear not. Because the one who makes you whole is with you. Hallelujah. Amen. I like that. I like that he said, I, mean, I am Lord. with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. Woo! We make people our God. We may think your ways are God. But it's time for us to grow in the Lord, y'all. So guess what? This is what we're going to say. I got work to do. I have work to do on myself. So when she comes along, she's going to come along. 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 She's and you just don't add to me like a necklace on my, a, a chain on my knee. <laughs> you just don't be beautiful. Or you just don't add to me, girl. Let's get it in. Amen. And then too, for a woman, okay, I thank God that you have been placed in my life to be the house band. The house band. The one who bands the house together, which is the husband, the house band. He bands the house together. Amen. My house band came into my life. He guards my life. He keeps my house. He's the head of my household. Amen. But in that being the head of my household, he's not the head of my life. Oh, no, 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 no. Amen. He's not the head of my life, so I will not die nor live because of him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Y'all need to know that. You better be prepared to fan that house. Don't be waiting on the woman to do it. It's your job. Bang, bang. 
So you better be prepared when that woman comes along that I, I'm not coming, you're not coming to make me whole. I'm coming because we got an assignment together. My job is to protect you. Amen. My job is to support you. My, my job is to protect my home and my family. It's a lot of heat. Bands. Too much heat. Bands will make a dance. Exactly. Amen. Exactly. Yeah, right, exactly. Amen. Sister Alex, one more thing to say. Y'all some, some bubbling up in me, but anyway, I know just to make it short, I'm not going to hold you along. But I was just thinking regarding what Lady Jane said. You know, I remember way back then, when we came together, me and my husband, we were both grown individuals. We were raised up in ministry. We knew God. But, you know, of course, sin gets involved and, you know, you kind of push away from the church and kind of push away from praying and kind of push away from being diligent to faithfully to go to church and stuff like that. So a lot of stuff, other stuff came into play as a result. Well, I remember I was trying, when God decided, to, well, when God fixed me, pulled me apart, my husband was still out there doing stuff. Can you go get me a pack of scissors? No. Can you go get me a, a, a beer? No. So God really started pulling me apart, and I was becoming so strong, y'all, and he was just getting so mad at me. But he was, the closer I got to God, the closer he got back to the world. And so it was like a pulling tug, and I was steady trying to fix him. Well, you shouldn't be doing it like that. You should be doing this, you should be doing that. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? And I'm crying again. You know. But God told me, leave him alone. I need to work on you. Don't you worry about your husband. I'm going to work on you. And the thing, you know, about being alone is, I was alone sometimes in my house and then had a husband connected to me. But sometimes I still would be alone, y'all. But God had to get a hold of me and let me know that I can't put my confidence and trust in that man. This is good word. This is a good word. I look to the man to make me happy. I had to, come to, I had to look to God to make me happy. And so, you know, as a result, you know, we just learn things down to the... We, I don't want to paint the picture that it was all perfect. It, perfect. it was not perfect, y'all. This was a lot of struggles. But that's why now I can stand up and say, you know, it's because of what I've gone through. Nothing was perfect. You know, there was a lot of ups and downs. But God made me strong through all of that. My God. You know, oh, my God. No, I didn't answer that. <laughs> I thought, oh, well, everything was on. You know how you have the dream, young ladies, you have a dream. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get married, and we're going to live on a house, you know, with the... You know, Happily the ever after, yeah. Farm and and crazy, and yeah. Everything is so beautiful. We're going to have flowers and all these kind of things going on. And we just going to be so happy. But the devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. Yeah. The enemy is a lie. Be encouraged. And with that, let's pray the Lord, y'all.